All right. Why don't we go ahead and get uh, get started? Uh, I want to uh, thank you all for attending this awesome session. I know it on the program it only says about I have about an hour and ten minutes, but I've been told I can take three or four. So strap in. Let's make this happen. No, I'm just kidding. Um, a little background about myself. Uh, my name is Ryan Zervakos, as you can see on the the, uh, the presentation. Uh, I've been with LinkedIn for about a year and a half, um, and I've been in e-learning for about 10 or 9. Um, I've actually worked with Berkeley for a while and uh, with my previous company, and I'm fortunate to get to work with you guys again. So very, very fortunate to have a partnership now with Lynda.com and LinkedIn. So what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit a little bit about LinkedIn and Lynda.com. How many of you guys know that uh, LinkedIn acquired Lynda.com? Nice, that's a lot. How many of you guys are familiar with Lynda.com at all? Is everybody familiar with Lynda.com? Very cool. I see a couple of people shaking their heads, so that's great. This is for you. Nobody else matters here. I'm just kidding. Um, so the uh, the idea behind uh, LinkedIn acquiring Lynda.com, it was a pretty pretty interesting thing. So LinkedIn's mission is to create economic opportunity at a global scale um, for every member of the global workforce. So that's our mission. That's our ethos. And what that means to LinkedIn is, um, do we connect people to jobs, right? Do we connect people to others that maybe help help them as influencers? Do we connect them to industry insight? Um, do we connect them to uh, be able to get promotions within their job? So it's not just about getting a job. Like a lot of people think LinkedIn, uh, the only reason I'm going to go to LinkedIn is so I can, if I need a job. That's not what we are all about. What we're all about is creating economic opportunity for you as, as our member. Uh, we are now at 500 million members worldwide. We're adding two new members per second. Um, a vast majority, when I say vast majority, I'm like 98% of those members are free. They're non-paid memberships, right? You can be a LinkedIn member for free. I highly recommend you are free. There's really no need to be a premium member. Um, don't, don't tell them I said that. This is getting recorded. Oh boy, I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> So uh, anyhow, the bottom line is that for the longest time, LinkedIn was able to connect you to jobs or connect you to thought leaders, uh, connect you to colleagues, other professionals. But there was no way for LinkedIn to actually help you get the skills you need to get that promotion or the skills you need to get that job that you want. Um, and that's where lynda.com came into play, right? So their idea was what what content provider out there on the market aligns tightly with LinkedIn's mission and ethos and also is easily consumable, right? And that's where lynda.com came into play. So they acquired lynda.com two years ago, um, really with the idea of improving productivity, um, helping to improve job, job satisfaction within the organization for those that are taking it and those that partner up with us, but also giving our members and giving those that partner up with us and use lynda.com a tool to develop yourself professionally, right? Anytime you need it, how you need it, when you need it. Really, that's our mission and that's our, our, our goal. Um, so everything that we're doing around lynda.com and LinkedIn as a combination, it really revolves around getting you the skills that you want, when you need them, how you need them. So with that in mind, there are a couple of things that we're trying to do to overcome skills development challenges, and that's what we're doing with our content, which is um, around engagement, alignment, um, trying to motivate you guys with different types of content, um, with, and adoption integration and validation. So that, this is our methodology about how we're going to roll out content for our clients, our, our partners like yourself, uh, that have access for, for everyone on campus. Um, while I'm asking that question, how many of you guys have actually used the Linda.com content? All right, great. Everybody else, you're dead to me. No, I'm, I'm really glad you guys are here because part of, part of the issue that we have is that we're all very busy, right? We're all very busy and we have a lot on our plates and you're thinking to yourself, what's this additional tool? Why am I going to go here? What's the point? Um, and so I'm glad you guys are here because really at the end of the day, you, you may not need to use it today or tomorrow. You probably won't. But maybe down the road in the next uh, month, two months or three months, you might come up on a reason that you need to or you want to develop yourself or learn something new. And instead of going to Google, instead of going to YouTube, um, you go maybe go to the Lynda.com platform through the Wisdom Cafe. And that's where it starts, right? And then the other thing is if you're looking maybe to promote yourself from within, there are gonna be some con there's going to be some content that may help you get those skills that you need. So really it's just about um, building this, uh, building this, this 
idea around continuing to develop ourselves professionally when we have the time to do it and where we, where we have the time to do it. We're also going to be partnering with uh, HR to try to develop competencies and, and align our content around your organizational competencies so that you can go in right away and see content that really resonates with you guys um, here. Um, one of the things that we're extremely proud of is the type of content that we have. So a little backstory about Linda. Uh, it, Linda.com was actually founded by Linda Wyman, who was a professor at UC Santa Barbara. Um, and she uh, was interested in software. But all of the software books that were out there, and this was in the 90s, were written for software developers. They weren't written for people that just kind of wanted to get into it and kind of understand it. They weren't written for a way for most people to understand it. So she decided to write a book about it based um, on an end user that doesn't have a lot of software experience and to try to make it more of, of an educational thing. And um, she started Lynda.com out of her garage. And uh, 20 years later, she sold it to LinkedIn for $1.5 billion. So she did okay. Um, but the reason I bring that up is because her methodology and her reasoning behind uh, the product and the platform was to make it engaging and make it as a resource really for students and for people that are interested in learning. Um, so that's the way that we develop our content. It's more of a, a fireside chat with all of our authors. All of our authors go through a very rigorous screening process because we pay our authors royalties. So um, all, every time you click on a video, we pay a royalty. So that helps us to get the best authors because they can actually get something from it, right? Um, plus, now that we're part of LinkedIn, there's a lot of recognition with that too. Every one of our courses is produced like a, uh, like a uh, movie. So there are five to six production assistants on every single one of our, our videos, every single one of our courses. We've got uh, whisper rooms, sound booths, green screens. Uh, we build sound stages. We have the largest production of video production facility north of Burbank, right, north of Hollywood in the state of California, and we're building more. We are building more because we want to add more content, yet still maintain our level of um, professionalism and the level, the, the actual, I don't want to say level of professionalism, but the level of quality of our content without sacrificing our content, sacrificing our quality, but increasing our um, output. The only way to do that is to really increase the capacity that we have, which we've done. So we have high quality content, it's expert led, and they're experts in the field. Uh, throughout throughout industry. The other thing that we do is we um, break up the content into um, bite-sized chunks, so micro-sized learning. So for example, there, um, I always forget this, I should remember, but the, the author of Getting Things Done is one of our authors. And it is a book, but it's, trunk, it's, it's, it's condensed into a, a two to three hour course. And within that course, all of, the, all of our courses are broken up into one to six minute videos. Every video has to be able to stand alone on its own, right? So it takes time to organize the content in a certain way that makes sense. It takes time to develop the content. It, time, it takes um, a lot of effort to make sure it makes sense in that, in that format. But the other thing for you guys is that as a consumer of this, you can go in and find exactly what you're looking for and get that content and move on because I knocked the mic, and move on. Um, so you don't have to take the course at the beginning and go all the way through the end. You don't need to take a two-hour course because let's face it, most of us don't have two hours to sit down at any given time and start from beginning to end in a course. We need to find what we're interested in, consume that, and then move on. So I'm going to take a few more minutes on this slide deck because slides are not exactly my favorite thing to do. And then I'm going to go actually onto the Lynn.com platform and show you guys in and out how you use the platform. Really, really um, easy to do. Um, before I forget, we do have a microphone here. So if you guys have any questions, uh, there's no real need to wait till the end um, because I know with my memory, I will forget. So if you guys have a question, just raise your hand and Karen will run around and, um, and give you guys the microphone. So anyhow, uh, getting, uh, getting a little bit further into this, the idea with this is just-in-time learning. It's self-paced learning. It's very, very easy to consume, and it's all really designed around how you get the content the way you want it, the way you need it. The other part of what we do is to get as much content as possible for our end user, right? So remember I said we're, we're developing now 40 courses per week. So prior to the acquisition, just to give you some context, uh, lynda.com was not unable to create more than about 900 courses per year. 
after the acquisition in 2015, we, we, we acquired Land.com in 2015, halfway through the year. And we were able to bump up production to 1,500 courses. Last year, it was 2,600 courses. This year, we're on the pace for 3,000 courses, 3,000 new courses. And what that means for you guys as our, our clients um, is that there's a ton of stuff, right? There's a lot of cool stuff. And I'm talking about anything from learning how to play the banjo. Um, if you want to be an EDM composer uh, or a producer, I just don't think it's a composer. I think it's a producer. Uh, you can do that. Uh, photography, some of our photography content is amazing. And then we also have phenomenal amounts of business content. And I'll go into that in more detail, um, IT content. A lot of great content that is developed specifically for professional development um, within any organization. And as you can see here, um, we have significant amounts of depth and breadth of content. It's really all designed around trying to help the end user get the skills that they need and they want at the time they want it. And then we also have the ability to create um, custom learning paths. Or we've, we've curated custom learning paths and playlists. So. With that, I'm going to go ahead and jump on over to, yes. Um, my question is, any of the courses, do you have certificate programs, degree programs, uh, or is that in the planning in the long term? Uh, that's a great question. And we don't have degrees. So LinkedIn is not ever going to get into that. We're not going to ever get into true certification. We're not ever going to get into degree programs because we are not an academic institution. Uh, we are a skills provider. Now we do have certificates of completion, which I will show you, but that's completely di that's different. And we do have certification paths. So let's say you want to be in Microsoft Office, um, you want MOS certification. We'll give you the content to help you get that certification, but we don't actually do the certification because that has to come from a governing body and it has to be proctored. So we do not do any certifications, but we you can once you complete our content, you do get a certificate of completion for actually taking our content. Does that make sense? So do you have a series of courses on a particular subject? Or are you talking about certificate of completion of a, a one single course? Or is there a series? Yeah, you are um, leading me into what I'm going to be saying now. So yeah, we, we, we have um, a certificate of completion for any one of our individual courses. Um, or you can get a certificate of completion for our learning paths. Um, that's it. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Once you start a course, is there any deadline on when you have to finish it? I mean, can you leave it just? Mine's, I have Photoshop, and it's been sitting there a couple months. Is, it, is that OK? No, that's not OK. You're getting <laughs> billed by the minute. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it, it's designed specifically to um, let you use it when you need it, how you need it. So you can come back to it at any time, and it will, it will come back to where you left off. It'll automatically bookmark. Um, so there is, no, there is no time constraint. I mean, that was really one of the things Linda uh, valued most was the ability for you to use it how you needed it and when you needed it. Um, so there's a little bit less formality than other providers out there. And that's a good thing, can be a good thing and a bad thing. But really, this is informal learning. It's a video, right? You click play and you can watch it. We are adding assessments um, so that it makes it a little bit more formal. But for the most part, you can come in and go as, as you please. I see that you've already um, logged in and stuff, but for UC employees, do we use our Calend IDs? Like, how do we access? Great question. Let's start there. Um, the fastest way to do it is to go to um, your Wisdom Cafe. Go to the Wisdom Cafe, and you'll notice the learning resources on the top right-hand side, not to mention um, all these cool lynda.com um, you know, featured videos that are right here in the front. Uh, you can actually click directly on that, and that should take you to your single sign-on. Everything is single sign-on, um, so you'll be able to use your your employee ID and your password, the regular employee and your password, real real straightforward. If you wanted to go to our learning res learning center, the the um, actual platform, you'll click on learning resources and then go to the lynda.com portion right here, and that will take you to the next screen where you put in your information, and then that brings up lynda.com. Quick and easy. The other, the other thing is, um, there's another question over here, uh, that this works on any mobile device. So the single sign-on works on any mobile device. It works on iPads. It works on Apple TV. 
uh, Roku, uh, any uh, Samsung, um, Android doesn't. It even works on Microsoft Windows phones, which I don't know if any. Does anybody have a Windows phone? Wow, that's awesome. We were bought by Microsoft, so we're really happy that you have that phone. Um, but the bottom line is, one of the things we have to do is we have to um, compress our file 28 times now, 20 different ways, in order for it to work on every single platform. And it's getting more and more difficult to do that. But the bottom line is it works anywhere. You had a question? Yeah, I was just wondering if there's any limitation on the content that we can see as UC employees as opposed to um, other sign-ins for Linda. Good question. Uh, no, uh, the platform that we have is the same platform for everyone that has access. So you get every single course that we produce. That's why you get the banjo courses and you get the you know new business course. Um, that's our methodology. Uh, it is a plus and a minus sometimes, uh, especially when it comes to trying to find content. So that's really what we're going to focus on uh, is how do you find content that will resonate with you at the time you need it when you're looking through 5,800 courses. But the bottom line is you get all the good stuff. Yeah. All right. Great questions. Um, let's start by taking a look at the platform in and of itself. So when you log in to lynda.com, if you click anytime you wanna get back to the home screen, you just click on the top left hand um, side, that icon up there, lynda.com, and it goes right back to the home screen. Um, there are a couple of things in here to keep in mind, right? What we're trying to do is trying to get you relevant content, um, make it a little bit more seamless, easy to find content. Um, and so we're always continually looking to develop this platform. So I'll show you ways that you can actually um, give us recommendations on the type of content that we do and, and anything that you see in the system because we definitely want your feedback. On the home page, the first thing you'll see are learning paths. So uh, originally you talked about a certificate of completion for a, a, a group of courses. These are curated learning paths by uh, LinkedIn and they revolve around the skills that we see that are in demand today based on all of the information that we have on LinkedIn. So remember, this is another thing that uh, I'm extremely uh, proud of and I think is, it needs to be said, is that when we're developing content, we're not just throwing a dart against the wall and, and just trying to you know, see where it lands, right? We have 500 million members and almost all of those members tell us what job they have. And almost all of those members tell us what skills they have for that job. We've got 10 million jobs on LinkedIn, and every one of those jobs tells us what skills you need for that job. So anytime information is put onto LinkedIn, we aggregate that data, and then we create courses around it. So we're creating courses today for jobs that are in demand today, for skills that are in demand today. And that's why we're not going to be academically inclined. It's all really about skills-based. It's not really about um, um, anything outside of that, which... I feel runs really well, works really well with higher, higher education institutions because we're, we're, we work in tandem, right? But the bottom line is these learning paths are designed um, by our or developed by our staff and curated around content we feel resonates in the workplace right now. So for example, if you wanted to get a, a skill on managing performance, here are all of our courses around managing performance. And you can start this learning path from the beginning and go to the end, you can see how long it will take you, right? This is about 11 hours worth of content. Um, the idea is to practice it and then certify it, certify it by getting a certificate of completion um, and then posting that to your LinkedIn profile if you want to. And then hopefully this will help you advance your career. So it's one way to find content are these custom curated learning paths through LinkedIn. Um, we started out with somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 or 50 last year, and we're already at 135 learning paths now. So we're adding all kinds of learning paths all the time, which is pretty, pretty cool. So to, again, to get back to the home screen, I click on the lynda.com icon on the top left, and that brings me back to a couple of other things I want to talk about. So um, oftentimes they get asked, what's new, right? What content is new? What's, what's the cool stuff? Well, you can click on our new um, platform right here. I'm not new platform, new icon, and it shows you all of the courses that are brand new. And remember, we're adding content all the time, so you can see Agile Requirements was created 10 hours ago. We've got Microsoft Cybersecurity 10 hours. So these are all the courses, and then you can actually, um, you know, dwindle that down uh, to see, let's say, if I want to know what's in photography or if I want to know what's in business. I always want to clarify this, by the way, because we are an academic institution. I only deal with higher education, so I had 
talk about this all the time. When you think of business, think of soft skills, right? Soft skills that you're going to use in your day-to-day job. It's not for corporate America. This is anybody that has a business skill. I really wish we would put business skills instead of put business in there. So um, I'll go over kind of the, the, the everything that's in that business collection. But here's an idea of all the business courses that we have that are brand new. And then you can see some of the popular courses. So if you want to know what's popular, you just click on the popular course and you can see what's popular. Um, and then you can see all the, the most popular courses of all time. Check out this course, Programming Fundamentals. We've got 11 million views on that Programming Fundamentals course. So if it's popular, it gets gets viewed. Somebody had a question? Hi, you, keep, you mentioned that um, when we take a course, then our LinkedIn profile will be updated. However, if we are entering lynda.com through uh, CalNet, with our CalNet ID, and that's not the email that we have on LinkedIn, will that still sync up? That is a really good question, and it doesn't automatically sync up. You, you, it's not like everything that you do automatically gets pushed because we value your privacy, and some people don't want to publish that they're looking for a new job, right? Interviewing skills, right? So um, just throwing that out there. Um, so you have to actually at the end, and I'll show you guys where to do that, you have to actually click on a link. Now, the way to actually connect the two, because you're right, if you're using your CalNet email, um, it's not going to connect to your LinkedIn profile. You would have to add that email address to your LinkedIn profile. So like me, I have two. You can add multiple email addresses in your LinkedIn profile. So I have one for my business and then one personal. I always You always want to have a personal email address in LinkedIn because it's your personal professional brand. Um, but then you would add your, your Berkeley email address, and that should be able to connect the two. It's a great question. Um, all right. So we were talking about learning paths. We're talking about popularity. You can see the, the courses uh, in the, the amount of courses that are popular. We also have recommended courses uh, within the organization. So the more people that recommend it, they give it thumbs up, the higher it comes up the chain, and then the popular at your organization. This is uh, going to be interesting for you guys when you log in to see what's popular here because you guys have your own platform. So you'll see what, uh, what your other colleagues are viewing and how many times they're viewing. So. Um, it's a, it's, this platform is my, um, is my platform I use to demo. So you can see that the teacher tips I, I look at quite often, communicating with empathy and office 360, those are the popular ones for me. Um, now on the left-hand side, one of the things that's important is to be able to get back to the content. So somebody was talking about how they started a Photoshop video a while ago. Um, this is a running total of what you've watched. So it's real easy to get back to what you've watched, right? The worst thing to do is when you're doing a search and you, you know, you find content or you find something online and then you go away for a couple of days and you come back and you're like, how, where did I find that? Where was that? Um, so as you know, on eBay and Amazon, they make it as easy as possible for you to find that, you know, pair of sneakers that you were looking at. Not that I ever shop for sneakers online. Um, but uh, the bottom line is what we're trying to do is get you back to where you were before as quickly and as easy as possible. So um, this is a running total of the courses that I've seen. And you can actually manipulate this. So let's say you want to declutter it. You can just click on this X and get rid of it. Um, or if you want to add it to a playlist, this is another thing we can do. You can add, you can add and curate your own playlist. Well, think of that as a learning path that you've created for yourself. So if you want to, let's say, get to the next level, or if you're interested in becoming uh, really proficient in Photoshop or Microsoft, and you want to create your own track, and you don't want to have to go back and forth every single time looking for new content, you can find those courses ahead of time, and you can add them to your own playlists. And it's as easy as clicking on new playlist right here, typing in the title of the playlist, or you can just go back and let's say, um, I don't want to put in Excel, but let's say you want to add it to information literacy. You, you click on this and it's added to the playlist. It's that easy to create new playlists within lynda.com. Just a couple of clicks. And again, this is all about getting the content that you want, how you want it, where you want it, um, without having to find it over and over again. And then of course, once you've done that, you just can click on play and it goes right back to where you left off. See the continue watching, boom nice and easy to, to just go ahead and, and continue watching. Um, With over 40 million users, LinkedIn is the world. Let me go ahead and um, turn off the volume because I cannot multitask. So if somebody else is talking, I will freak out. Um, 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about the user interface for the actual um, course because this is important too. One of the things that we want to do is make it easy for you guys to use this content um, on the fly, right? So a couple of things that you can do, a couple of things that are important. One is to, um, if you wanted to go full screen, you could obviously go full screen, but a lot of times people, it's kind of buried in here under the settings menu, is the ability to pop out this video. So if you, let's say, are um, having a tough time with pivot tables, I know I always have a tough time with pivot tables. You want to learn pivot tables, but you want to have your Excel open in this one and you want to have, you learn pivot tables over here. You can come over to Linda, you can hit pop out video and it pops out this video and you can scroll it, you can move it to the other side, right? It's really, really easy for you to go ahead and, and actually be on multiple screens at the same time because we have the ability to pop out this video. Um, you can also move it to the other, and it, as you saw, it was a full screen. So it goes to the other video full screen or the other, the other screen full screen. You can change the layout. So if you wanted to actually have the layout um, look a little bit differently, you can do that as well. For those of you that are quick learners, you can actually increase the playback speed. So if you really want to get something done quickly, you can do that. For those of you like me that are slow learners, we can slow this bad boy down. Um, that way I can really take my time learning, learning anything. Uh, we're all 508 compliant, so closed captioning right there. Pretty straightforward. The, uh, one of the things that is important to note is that we have a transcript. There's a transcript for every one of our courses, a full transcript. And as you notice, see how the, uh, the content is getting highlighted as, it, as, he, as the person talks? Uh, this way you can follow along if you want to read along. Or if you want to go directly to that portion, you just click on that and it skips right to that portion. Um, the, also, the other thing that's important about this is that it searches every word of every course. So how are you going to be able to search a course if it's video content? The only way you can search it is if we have a transcript associated with that. So you can search very, very granularly. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, so that gives you the opportunity to find content that you need, how you need it. So I'm going to pause this real quickly right here. Again, to add to playlists, you just want to, if you want to add it to a playlist, you can click on this icon right here and it goes right to adding a playlist. Something else I want to talk about that I feel is important is the share functionality. So what we want to do, especially as a, uh, at LinkedIn as a, a social networking company, is to share content, share vision, share, share what we feel is important. And so if you're on LinkedIn and you feel like this course really resonates with you or is important or is important for other people to see or it's great, whatever, you can actually just click on this share link and you can embed that directly into LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. So the more people that do that, the better. And we really invite you guys to, to um, share our content. You can actually also share content with other colleagues, which is pretty cool. And I'll show you that one in a minute with, within our playlists. Now, as far as the user interface for um, the, this course, and I want to talk a little bit about our nomenclature. So when I say course, it means uh, it's comprised, it's usually two to three hours in length, and it has about 20 to 30 videos embedded in it. So a video is one to six minutes. A course is usually two hours. So this one is uh, exploring LinkedIn, and within this course, we, we need to know, we're going to know how to you know, personalize your headline, um, add a summary. All of these are individual videos that can stand uh, um, alone on their own, and you can go directly to the portion of that video as well. You also have the ability to take notes. So if you wanted to take a note within this course, you could easily do so. And once you, let's say I like this video, <clears throat> click enter, it timestamps your note and it allows you to go directly to that portion of the video quickly and easily. You can also download this content really easily as well. You can export it into PDF, you can export it into Word, whatever you wanna do. So what we're trying to do with the platform is really allow you as a learner to um, use it as a tool when you need it, how you need it, and then come back to it quickly and easily. So you can actually learn on the fly and, um, and put notes in here and then go back and search those notes. So it's pretty powerful, the ability to actually go in and take notes um, so that you can have better knowledge transfer and knowledge retention. You remember earlier I talked a little bit about um, giving us feedback. So I wanna go back to here real quickly. Every single one of our courses has this portion, has this link to give us feedback. And we want your feedback. This feedback goes directly to LinkedIn and we look at this feedback all the time. 
So we want to know, are you satisfied with the content? We want to know all this good stuff, but probably the most important one is the very bottom. And I'll let you take a look at this. What other courses or topics would you like to see in the learner.com online training library? And why it's important to me is because of our vertical, right? We're in higher education and you guys might be looking for some higher education specific content that we may not have. And if I have every one of my colleges and universities saying, hey, this content would be fantastic, guess what? I got a shot at getting that built. So we really want to hear from you guys, see what type of content that you like and see if we can get it added. There's a yeah. uh, question. It's actually mine. Okay. Um, so along these lines, if I have an idea for a learning path or a couple that I could utilize, but I don't find them, is this the only step I can take to suggest it? Or can I get some one-on-one -on -one consultation with you or somebody else about um, putting together a new learning path that works for my um, purpose. I don't have the bandwidth uh, it, that is done here. Um, we can help you guys, but that's usually done for, through David Wynn, who is your master admin in HR. Um, and he probably has a couple of other people on there as well. But we, we definitely want to hear from you guys. And if, if I can, I would definitely do it. But I would first reach out to your master admin. Um, and that's David. I'm sure we'll get you that contact. And INET works with them all the time. So um, we can get you the contact information for your master admin. And what we're trying to do and what he's working with us is to try to organize content for you guys that we currently have. If we don't have the content, we're pretty much so unless we, until we build it, there's not much we can do, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're working on our new platform, by the way, is going to be able to put custom content. So that's going to be a game changer for us. You had a quick question too? Um, any other questions about this while I'm while I'm moving along? Oh. I have a question. Yes. Um, your recommended uh, courses are they based on your usage as an individual, or is it recommended by a global usage? Uh, that's a good question. It is right now. It's it's individually within your organization. Mm -hmm. um, so it's people that are clicking the like button that, that okay. are recommending it. Um, we're working on how we're going to do it within the platform for globally. Um, but for us, it's more important to have it locally, right? So what is recommended in, you know, the UK might not be the same thing that resonates for you guys here at Berkeley. So okay. um, yeah, it's more local. Okay. She's gradually making her way up here. I wanted to ask about uh, if um, when you complete a certificate or you get your certificate of completion, if that shows on LinkedIn or if there's a way to link that to LinkedIn in terms of um, people can, uh, you know, recommend you or, or um, mm -hmm. you know, say that you've got these skills, does that have a similar ability or? Yeah, I'll cover that in just a second. We, we definitely can do that. It's, uh, it's automatically built in. And the question was asked before, just in case, just to reiterate, um, you have to have your LinkedIn email address that's connected with this account, or it's the same as this account. So if you're using a Berkeley email address, which you probably are, you need to have that Berkeley email address in your LinkedIn profile, and you can have multiple email addresses in your LinkedIn profile. So, um, Hi. Uh, my question, I guess, was to piggyback off of your question, and my apology if you explained this already, but um, are there certain, not necessarily, well, certificates, not certifications, but are there tracks that are UC Berkeley specific or staff specific, like coming down from HR, mm -hmm. that if you say you want professional development in this area or to move into this position, you can kind of follow along with these things and Berkeley would recognize it? That is <laughs> what Dave's working on. So what we've done is we've taken, and it should be in UC Learn, right? So there are two places to find this content, and I don't have access to UC Learn, um, but that's your learning management system, and that's where Dave has put um, our content and aligned it with your previous vendor. You had a previous vendor that had all that aligned? Our content is all aligned to that as well. So the answer to that is yes. You can go on to UC Learn, and you should be able to see Lynn.com content that's specific for your role and to help you get to the next, to the next level. Exactly. That's, that's one of our best practices. Um, and if you need more of it or you see more of it or you, you see something that isn't there, if you want to let Dave know, we actually map for him so he doesn't have to go through all these 5,000 courses. Um, we'll do that automatically for him. We'll, we'll map to it for him. So if you guys see and see more, let him know. He'll let me know and we'll, we'll knock it out for you. 
Um, all right, I am, uh, the, the user interface for our content is pretty straightforward. Um, just kind of as, a, as an aside, Linda started as a B2C, right? So um, me meaning individual consumers would go on and pay $30 a month or whatever it is to have access to Linda.com. And so there's no way for us to do these training sessions for all of them. So the, the user interface is designed fairly intuitively. So all I'm saying by that is that you can point and click wherever you want. You're not going to break anything. It's really, really straightforward. So if you have any issues or questions, you can always go to this, these little three dots right here and click on take a tour. And that's going to give you some insights that I probably don't know or haven't shown you um, and, and kind of go through the entire system for you as well. So it's real easy to find what you're looking for. Um, I want to, uh, I want to go over to the certificates of completion to answer the to address the question about the LinkedIn. Um, anytime you complete a course, it automatically goes to the certificate of completion. Now remember, it's not a certification; it's a certificate of completion, automatically registered on Linda. It's its own separate entity. It's not automatically pushed out to LinkedIn unless you want to, and that's where you do the share button. Share right here. Again, you can share it to your LinkedIn profiles. You can actually share a link if you want to. Um, maybe put it in your resume or something like that. Um, put it on your blog. But if you want to add it to your profile, there's the link. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you complete a course, by the way, when you're in the course, it'll also automatically push that out to you. So you don't have to go to the screen. But once you've left and come back, so all of these I've completed and now I'm coming back to it then I have to go to the certificate of completion, the, the uh, actual certificates page. All right, so we, um, we've kind of jumped around a little bit. I've gone into how a course looks and feels, right? We've looked at the home page, continue watching. Here's the playlist. Uh, these, this is a playlist widget, so you can go into some of your playlists on the left side of the screen. We've actually added this goal widget to help you with goals, right? Um, the first thing you might be, I think the first goal is to watch the 30 minutes of a course and then the next one is to complete a course. Um, so we're trying to make it, gamify it and make it a little bit more fun. So when you come in, you go, okay, I got something else I can, I can, uh, try to, to achieve. Um, I want to show you guys real quickly the depth and breadth of our library and how you can find content. So there are two different ways to find content. One way is to browse, right? That's what most people do if you're just kind of checking it out. Um, so when you, in order to do that, you only have to hover over the library tab. You don't have to click on it. It automatically brings up all of our content the way that we break up the content. Remember, business is soft skills. Anything that are employability skills, that's going to be in our business collection. Um, we also have education and e-learning content. If there's some IT folks in the house, we've got IT content. The two fastest uh, collections that are growing are our business collection for soft skills and our IT collection. We're just rapidly increasing content in both of those areas. So if we go to the business collection, Again, we can hover over these and you can see the different topics that we have. So we've got data analysis, uh, leadership management, productivity. Um, all of these fall into our business collection. We also have software for business, which is going to be on a lot of your Microsoft Office. And then we've got some learning paths. So real quick and easy, if you want to see what kind of content we have in, let's say, productivity, we'll just click on the productivity link. It'll go directly to all of that content. And then we can browse that content there. So you can see getting started, we've got some learning paths within productivity, uh, some weekly series. If you want to see what weekly series we have, we can just click on the weekly series. Here are Monday productivity pointers. So I'm glad I brought this up because just for the record, these are some of the few courses that are not two hours in link. In length, they we keep adding videos to them all the time. So we've got we, weekly teacher teacher training, and it's an eighteen hour course now, right? Nobody's going to sit at the beginning of that course because it's been out for you know a year or so. But every week we're adding five minutes of content. So these tips are going to be some of the few courses that are are very long. But it starts you at the end. It starts you where 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 you want to be with the newest t tips and trick. So. Here you can see our productivity pointer for February, and you can you can see this one this week. If you want to use trace dependence in Excel to see if it's changing in value, I have no idea what that means, but we can find out here. So this is some of our productivity content. Again, easy to find. Just hover over the um, library icon and go down to the content that you're interested in. And remember, we have a lot of great content. So some of the other things that are, are, are of interest, um, 
are some of the some of the kind of off the wall content. I mentioned um, banjo playing. I was talking to a client of mine, and and that was one of the most popular courses. They marketed to everybody, and people were interested. How do you play banjo? What does that look like? Um, we've got great content on iPhones and Android. You want to learn how to use your Android? You want to learn how to use the newest Samsung? We have that content. Um, normally, we are about a year in our production. Um, a production cycle takes about a year, but um, but we can expedite that production cycle. So the fastest we've ever produced a course from beginning to end, remember, with our production value, five production assistants, all this other good stuff, eight hours. Eight hours. And that was for a new Samsung product that was super hot on the market, and we wanted to get that content out there. So this is another thing. So when we're talking about having this as a benefit, um, it's not necessarily just professional development. It's also, how do I use this brand new iPhone 7? Um, I know I don't use my iPhone as much as I could. And part of the reason is because I don't know how to, right? So we have that content here. A lot of people are interested in taking photography. We have some of the best photography content out there. Really, really powerful photography content. And it even is content on how to use certain cameras. So let's say you go out and for Christmas, you get yourself a DSLR Canon. We might have that content teach you how to use that Canon. And remember, all this is in video form, and it's available on Apple, uh, on uh, your Apple TV. So you have the ability to actually watch this content at home if you like, while you're learning your new camera. Or if you want to learn how to be a GoPro hero, you can do that as well. I would do that, but it would probably make me look foolish. Um, videography, and of course, web. There's a lot of web design. but. One of our most popular collections, just to let you guys know, is photography. It's really, really powerful. And, and there's also, by the way, iPhone photography. For those of you who want to take some great photos with your iPhone, all, all kinds of great stuff on there. All right, so we've covered how to um, search for content as in browsing. Um, the other way to is, is just to do a search for content. So if you're interested in a topic, we can always type that topic in there. So let's say we want to talk about leadership. We can just type in leadership and we're gonna find all kinds of good stuff on leadership. But the problem is, again, we've got 5,800 courses. It searches every word of every course. It brings up a lot of content. So what we wanna do is try to refine that search by being a little bit more granular, a little bit more um, specific with, with that content. So um, we can search anything you want. So let's say we wanna search project management. Um, we can search project management this way. We can also put quotes on the front end and back end so that it will search, do a Boolean search and search just those two words or three words that string together. And that will also um, refine what you're doing. You'll notice we have a ton of courses on project management um, with the words together. But the nice thing is the first thing that pops up are titles with project management. It gets, a, gets right to the content that you're looking for. And again, once you search or browse, um, on the left-hand side of the screen, it's a lot like uh, eBay and Amazon, um, where you can refine what you're looking for. So we break up our content into beginner, intermediate, and advanced, um, all of, virtually all of our content, and then we have content that is approved, appropriate for all, as you can say, as you can see. So if you want to start with a skill, start at the beginning, you can do that very easily. Um, you also have the ability to see which courses or what content is less than a certain uh, duration. And then you can change your subject area. So if you're interested in project management, specifically in project management, you can do that. We've got IT project management, so you can see what's in there for IT. And then you can also see if we, what software is available, if we've got certain companies that are in there, and then if you're interested in certain authors. So you do have the ability to really refine what you're searching for once you're in there. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are the searches, the first ones that come up, are those based on popularity? Um, no, they're sorted by best match. By best match. Yeah, sorted okay. by best match, yeah. Okay. We don't have that, uh, we don't have that just yet. Another question? Um, do you have biographical information included on the authors so we know who's teaching the courses? Uh, that is a good question. I'm pretty sure we do. I've done this a million times. And yeah, here's, here's the author. Yep, there you go. Excellent, thank you. I knew that. I was just kind of just testing myself right there. So going back to the weekly series, yeah. let's say you've followed a weekly series, so forth and so on, and, and there's new content added. Is there anything within the system that allows 
a notification that some new content has been added. It can be pushed to you so you know, oh, there's something new I need to learn. That is um, an awesome question. And we are not there on this platform. With our new platform, it's called LinkedIn Learning. Um, we are gonna have that. And you're gonna be able to turn on those, turn on and off those notifications. Um, it's a balance between what we push out to people because we don't want to blast you guys too much. Um, and this system doesn't have the capability for us to do that and then um, uh, fine tune it, whereas LinkedIn does. So the new LinkedIn learning platform is based off of LinkedIn. It's going to be a separate platform, but it's based the same way. And there are a lot more privacy settings, a lot more uh, functionality with, with pushing content. And so we're, we're getting there, yeah. Because that's a good question. I mean, part of part of the deal is, and this is the feedback I get, is that you know you forget about it, right? You're again, we're all busy, so you forget about the content. It's nice to have a weekly tip just come into your email, and you're like, ah, oh, you can ignore it, or every other week you can check it out, and it might might help you. So we're getting there. We're also working with um, with the team to actually start maybe pushing out emails to you guys once a week or every other week that are tips that might be uh, specific to this organization. So um, that's one of the things that we're trying to do with, with David and his team, but he's super busy as well. Um, but we're getting there. Uh, somebody else had a question? No, but I was, oh yeah, but I was just gonna say if, ask your questions. We got like 10, 15 more minutes, so no question is not a good question. And you have him here now. So if I wanted to access lynda.com outside of UC Berkeley, would there be a cost? No. Oh, That's sure. a really good question. I probably should have. I probably should have started with that one. Um, but no, you use your same uh, login credentials. When you log in, it's going to ask you for um, if you want to log in as an individual or through an organization. Just put in organization, and then you put your Berkeley URL, and then it, your single sign-on will work. Um, but no, absolutely not. If you are asked to pay for it, please do not. You know. You're not, we don't want you to pay for it. You guys have access to it anytime, anywhere. And it works on your mobile devices too. Good question. All right, let's cover a couple more things and then I can give you guys some time back. Um, I wanna talk about some of the backend functionality, right? So again, we talked a little bit about playlists and what I wanna go into playlists a little bit more, um, in, in a little bit more detail because what would be awesome is for some of you power users, right? If you really love this content and you find it, it resonates with you, you might be able to be our champions and let other people know about it. But you might want to not let everybody know about the, an, an entire course. Maybe it's just one video within a course that you like. You can actually manipulate the playlists in order to um, reduce the amount of content that's in a playlist and then you can share it with just about anybody you want to. So for example, um, if we want to go into our diversity, I created a diversity playlist. Right now this playlist is two courses. What I can do is go up into edit playlist and then you can go into the course and you hit this little drop down menu and you notice all of these, uh, the, all of these individual videos. You can actually delete these videos, not necessarily delete them, but you're going to take them out so they're not played within the course, not played within the playlist. Um, and again, remember, you're not going to break anything. So they're all there. It's just now they're not played within playlists. So let's say there is um, common mistakes in diversity, rec diversity recruiting, right? This is something that you feel is important. We can reduce this course to maybe just that portion. Um, once it's done, it is done. And then I can just click on done right here. Um, and then I have the ability to make this public and then I can share this. And you can share with the URL link and you can copy and paste this URL link. So you can share this with anybody you want to. Um, so you create your own playlist and that playlist can be as small as one video. You have to start a playlist at the course level. Um, unless you're in the course, you can actually create a playlist with just a video. So that's kind of nice. If you found a video you like, you just click on playlist. It'll ask you if you wanna, if you wanna just create a playlist with that video. So that eliminates all this. But if you've created the course playlist, you can refine it or you can just send out the entire course and you can share that. So if you're, if there are any managers in here that you want to share some playlists with your, or share some content with your direct reports, this is another best practice, right? Um, or if you are a direct report and you want to share with your manager and see what your manager thinks about it, you can share directly with them. And again, you can share, you can actually type the email address directly into lynda.com, which is kind of cool. But a lot of times that's coming through the lynda.com URL. So people might, you're like, why is this getting sent to me? So that's why we, we recommend that when you share, you just copy and paste this URL link so you can send it directly from your email address. 
and you can post that wherever you want to. Um, the assign, don't worry about that. That's really only for um, administrators. If you want admin rights, we can talk to David and at a managerial level, you might have the ability, he might be able to set you guys up with admin so that you can uh, track and report on your direct reports, see what they're looking and see what they're learning or maybe assign content. If you wanna do something a little bit more professionally and do, do it um, you know, for, um, for them to develop themselves professionally, then again, you still have UC Learn, so that's probably um, no need for that. The bookmarks, uh, you have the ability to bookmark any time, any video at any time. So uh, I, I didn't show you how to bookmark, but this is this is a bookmark. We've, a lot of people have seen Kindle. It looks like the same as bookmark and Kindle. Go ahead. Hang, hang on one second. Yeah, sure. The share function, mm -hmm. who can you share it with if it's somebody outside of the UC Berkeley organization, do they then have to pay to watch your playlist? Um, that's a good question. You can share with anybody you want to. Um, we Normally people are sharing it within their organization with other people that have access. But if you wanted to, let's say, post it on LinkedIn or post it on uh, wherever you want on your blog, 10% of our content is free. So normally when you're sharing something, they'll be able to see a little portion of it, um, but then it'll stop and it'll say if you want access, you'll have to buy it or you'll have to go through your provider like Berkeley or whatever. But you can put it anywhere you want to. They just won't be able to see all of it. All right. Um, we covered the playlists and, uh, and, and again, our history. I'll go back to our history really, really quick and easy. You can see all of the information here. Um, our recommended titles. You can see the recommended titles here as well. Um, this interests one of the things that you can do when the first time you come onto the system, it's brand new. We actually updated this about six, not brand new anymore, about six months ago. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do as a, as a, as a content provider is to um, get content to you specifically to you based on the clicks that you do within the system. But an easy way to advance that is by having you tell us what you're interested in. So the first time you log in, you're going to be able to see this skills that interest you. And then you can click on the skills that interest you, and now we're gonna start pre-populating skills that are of interest to you. So when you log in, you're gonna see new content that is in, for me, it's business, productivity, communication, presentations. Um, that's stuff I'm interested in. Here are some other things that you can be interested in, and you can actually add more. And if you don't see your skill, you can click there and you can actually enter it. And so you can add, add all kinds of cool skills. Hi, I have another playlist question. If you're no longer with UC Berkeley, can you take your playlist with you to your next organization or if you retire or you? Um, yeah, you can. You can, um, when you, let's say you decide to go, retire and um, you go to lender.com, you can buy a, a, premium, a premium subscription to Lyft, premium subscription to LinkedIn actually gets you lynda.com, but if you want to lynda by itself, you can get your own lynda.com subscription the first time you log in, it should recognize you, and that's another reason, quite frankly, you want to have both email addresses. Um, it should recognize that you had a previous subscription, and it'll say, do you want to transfer your history? And you say yes. Um, if it doesn't happen, then you can call our tech support, and sometimes they'll be able to, they should be able to log in and get it for you. Yes, another question up here. Uh, I'm sorry if you've already answered this question, but I'm just thinking since most of this content we can access through different websites, um, I think most of the topics, TED Talks already has several presentations. I'm just um, thinking what is the added value that lynda.com gives us that we can't find besides having a central hub to access all of these different courses? Well, yeah, there, there are a couple of things. First of all, I mean, TED Talks are not like Linda. We have very specific content for business, for skills that you need, everyday skills. So TED Talks are fantastic, but they're not going to teach you how to do Microsoft Excel pivot tables, right? Um, you can go to YouTube. YouTube has You can go to YouTube, but right. who is that? Right? You have no idea who that is and if they know what they're talking about. The other thing is it's not tracked and reported. So if you are anybody, I mean really in an organization, 
Um, if you're developing yourself professionally, a lot of times your management, your leadership team is going to want to know that. And if you do it here, they know that you're trying to develop yourself professionally. Um, and you can, again, post that to your LinkedIn profile. So, yeah, you can go to YouTube, but uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not vetted in any way. You know, our content is vetted. LinkedIn is, I mean, LinkedIn is LinkedIn. And so we have the best thought leaders, the best authors, and it's done incredibly professionally. And you can search for content and get right to what you're looking for, right? Remember that you can, if you're looking for pivot tables, you can get right to that content, learn that content, and go back to what you're doing. So it's, you know, you can definitely go to YouTube, but you don't know what you're getting. You know what you're getting with us. And it's, it's you know, done more professionally. Um, but outside of that, I mean, it's up to you what you want to do. And the other thing, too, is that, again, we're building the content based on what we see out there in the marketplace that's needed, done by professionals. And we have, we have Ariana Huffington now as, as one of our authors. Um, and, and we're getting more and more powerful presenters on the platform. And you can't get that anywhere else. Like her, her, her content, she's not out there for the public. It's only on our platform. Yeah. So a little bit ago, you mentioned that um, managers could get admin rights to see what their subordinates were looking at. Um, mm -hmm. How do we know if our manager has admin rights and if they're looking at what we're looking at? Um, right now, nobody does. Uh, that's, that hasn't been rolled out. Um, and, you know, it really, it really depends on what, you know, what uh, Dave wants to do at, at the HR office and if, if they want to actually get that granular. Um, but for the most part, no managers are on the system right now. Are these courses primarily like instructional videos or is there an interactive uh, feature where you're tested on the content that you've learned to get the uh, certificate of completion? Uh, that's a good question. We, we're adding assessments. I. I kind of alluded to that at the beginning, how there were no assessments with lynda.com content uh, for the longest time, but we are building assessments into the platform. So now you do have assessments in most of the new content that we're building. Um, and you also have some exercise files. So you have the ability to take our content um, or take these exercise files and use them offline. Um, so to practically apply the skills that you're building. Um, so that's one way you can do it, but for the most part, the assessment, it, it's video-based content. So you're not gonna have any, any uh, feedback other than the assessments or the exercise files. All right, I think that's about it. Um, did you? I just wanna, before we close, mm -hmm. and we thank you, and you have your final comments, just a p request for people to fill out your evaluation, and um, we'll be at the back, and you can turn it in. Did you have anything that you wanted to finalize with before we thank you? No, I just wanted to thank you guys for taking an hour out of your day to listen. I, I hope that uh, this platform is useful for you all. Really, it's designed for, um, it's, it is for you guys as uh, staff members here at Berkeley. Um, and we would love your feedback. But again, with the course evaluation, let us know what you think. Let us know how you, how you like it, what you don't like about it, and we'll, we'll do our best to make it better. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.